What's up my sexy programmers, Real Touch GML here back with another basic Java tutorial and today we're going to be learning about the return statement. Now the return statement is very important in a lot of the programs that you are going to be creating. So without further ado, let's begin. Alright, so in our last tutorial we went ahead and just made this simple little, little class here, little project where it just printed out some text. But what I'm going to do in this one is, let's say, here. alright, I'm going to, I'm going to, have you guys do this before you actually watch the video so I want you to create a calculator but you have to use two methods to do it your first method needs to solve or do the calculation your second method needs to just display everything so that's what we're gonna be doing today you can try it out right now if you'd like and see you know if you got it right or if you did it a different way than what I'm gonna do here which is which is pretty efficient the way I'm gonna be showing you so you can pause the video now or you can just keep going so all right, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this method here, and get rid of this this print text, and I'm just gonna import the scanner right off the bat because we are going to we're going to be adding in a uh, some numbers, so system dot in. You should remember this from our last tutorials. Okay, so and then now I'm gonna say system dot out dot print. Enter number one. Okay, and then I'll just say sc dot next line, and now I'll just say system dot out dot print. Enter number two. Sc dot next line, and oh, I'm sorry, we have to uh, we have to create these into integers. So int num one, and int num two. So num one equals that, and num two equals that. Oh, I'm sorry. These need to be strings. There we go. All right. So, uh, one one thing actually though, I don't. Um, let's not make these strings. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna make these integers, and I'm just gonna because I've already sh I've already shown you how to cast and everything. I don't really need to do that now. So instead of saying next line, we're, I'm just gonna say next int. And that is going to allow you to just put in an integer, and you won't, you can uh, skip the casting process. And then sc dot close, just so we get rid of that Java error. All right, so now that we've got all this, and if we run the program, as you can see, enter num one, ten, twenty, and now we're going to give a calculation out. So let's make a new method real quick: private static void, uh, and then I'm just going to name it solve okay now now one thing you may notice though is I put void and if you remember my last tutorial on uh, introducing methods is void means there's no return value in this tutorial is going to be showing you how to do the uh, return value so instead of void I'm gonna say integer and <clears throat> I'm just gonna return zero for now just so it gets rid of that error and in our solve I'm gonna have two parameters int num one int num two just like we have here so once we've once we've put in everything, then we're just gonna say solve num one num two, and that should be good. So in here now, we're all we have to do is say <clears throat> int solution equals num one plus num two, and then return solution. So that's very basic right there. And now instead of just saying solve, we're just gonna put this into a variable. So I can say int solution as well equals solve. Now the reason you may be saying, whoa, you have a solution here and solution here. These are in two different methods. When I create this method here, it's, or uh, I'm sorry, if, if I create this variable here, it's local to this method. Same with this. So this, as far as this variable is concerned, it will not interact at all with, with this one here. Okay, so this is pretty basic, and what we do to return is basically this method right here takes place of what this number will be. So we're basically saying in solution equals num1 plus num2, except we're doing it within a method. Okay, so that's that's kind of, that's pretty much what the return statement does. Now, so we say in solution, and now all we have to do is say system dot out dot print line solution solution is plus solution 
So let's run it. Enter number one, I'll say 20. Number two, I'll say 40. Solution is 60, so there we go, it does work. So <clears throat> that is, that's pretty cool. So again, let me just rehash through this just in case you don't quite get it. Basically we're setting num1 and num2 as we enter the numbers in. Then we're calling this solve method, which we learned in the last tutorial, and giving both parameters. So since we have parameter here, and we put in num1, so if we entered, say, 10 for number 1, it's just like saying 10, except we don't know what the user is going to put, so we just put it into a variable. Uh, and then uh, we just create a solution, which takes these two uh, variables and adds them, and then returns that variable into our integer down here, which we then print out. So these, to sort of make it make it a little easier, these can be called whatever you want. They don't need to be called the same as num1, num2. You can just say one and two. So we're, we're when we say in solution equals one plus two, or num1 plus num2, we're talking about these variables here, not these. Okay, but these are just taking place of what these are because we pass them through the parameters. And then we'll just return it. I hope that makes sense, but but yeah, that's basically the tutorial for today. This is gonna be very helpful for you later on. But yeah, that's basically it. Go leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's try and get this up to 25 likes, if that is possible. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. We'll be getting into some pretty awesome stuff after this tutorial, and you will just have to wait and see what it is. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Yeah.